Hello and welcome to this uh, conversation with the uh, Minister for Railways, Mr. Suresh Prabhu. We are doing this to mark uh, one year of the NDA government. And uh, Mr. Prabhu uh, has a reputation for being a competent and efficient minister. Uh, and he, a lot of hopes uh, rest on his own ministry, uh, the Indian Railways, especially from the investment point of view. Railway is going to do a huge scale up in investments over the next five years, uh, which by itself, I'm told could add about 2% to the GDP growth. So, so he's a key man to watch. Uh, of course, Mr. Prabhu has other responsibilities too. He's been Sherpa uh, at, at our G20 interactions uh, and he also looks at uh, uh, the larger macroeconomic uh, picture. Uh, welcome to our show, our show Mr. Suresh Prabhu. Now, give us a broad overview of uh, one year of Modi government. Uh, uh, mixed responses, uh, probably because of uh, high expectations raised. Uh, so the businesses are saying, well, they, they still have hopes, uh, things are moving, but not at the same pace. Uh, and there are other constituencies which are also a bit uh, impatient, uh, probably also because of the kind of new energy and expectations uh, that the NDA had built. So how do you see uh, the situation today and over the next one year? You know, we have tried to address so many of the concerns of the people, the economy as whole sectors in particular of various sectors is whether power, whether it is natural uh, resources, whether it is uh, transportation sure. or whether it is related to uh, social sectors and others. While we do that, we also realize that we have to get a global confidence in India. Yeah. So we have embarked upon that. A Prime Minister was leading from the front. He has actually managed to do that. the first that. big objective, to get confidence back. Confidence back. Both domestic and global. Domestic, global, uh, get uh, technology, get resources from outside sure. and also make India's, mar India's mar market, the Indian's mar the, the market of the other countries available to the Indians. Indian so all of that uh, was done. Plus we focused on some of the very key programs in addition to the sectors and the macro issues and the global policy like uh, social sector. If you take issues like uh, financial inclusion, yeah. which we talked about. Yeah. So we thought that inclusion is something which should be discussed only in academic circles. Yeah. Oh. But we made it a reality in a shortest possible time. I was really compliment our Prime Minister Jandhan and the Jandhan Finance Jandhan Minister. Jandhan Yojana yeah. insurance campaign, uh, unbelievable. And particularly in the insurance uh, program is just started on 9th of May. Yeah. And already 6-7 crore people have joined. But had Jandhan Yojana not been in place, many of this could not be possible. So it was like a backbone. It was like a com uh, available infrastructure and then we could piggyback on that and develop so many new ideas so you, and schemes. Yeah, okay. So you would, to some extent, you would uh, concede that the foundation for Jandhan Yojana uh, to some extent had been laid uh, during the previous regime, but you really scaled it up, right? Oh. I don't think, you know, you, you can say that the UPA one was lucky that NDA's foundation could be used by them for the launching pad. Okay. But you know, so the flight could go up to a particular level. Aadhaar, DBT, direct yeah. benefit But they, they had to come back again to the base because they did not invest enough into the infrastructure for tomorrow. So what we are doing today is undoing certain challenges like confidence level. It was something which was very low when we became the, we formed the government. Okay. Again, uh, untangling the stuck project, which was also the legacy that we inherited. So all of that has been done mm -hmm. and in a way that lays down the foundation. But we should not stop at that because we have to make investments into various sectors that you mentioned like railways. Railways, yeah. So railways will be the key yeah. to development of making India campaign. 8.5 lakh crore in course. 5 years. And why? This is actually in, in a way, I would not, I didn't take out this figure from the hearts anywhere, somewhere. This is the bare minimum that is required mm -hmm. to sustain the efficiency of railways to make sure that the operations run without the congestion that is associated with it today. We also modernize a bit because not entirely but modernize it. Yeah. We also invest into something which is so critically needed like traffic facilities because there is a clogged infrastructure which does not even allow any leeway for movement of trains. So we are all done doing all that. Mm. So this is going to be required. And you don't have land acquisition problems with railways because you have right of way, right? Not Always, we have also many places land acquisition, mm -hmm. but th therefore when some people ask me, why don't you sell land? I said, I should sell now and then buy it four times at the market price later. later. What is the purpose? Yeah. So I think we need that land. We, in fact, the challenge is how to keep it encroachment free. 
Yeah. So that's what we are trying to digitize the land, etc. But the point I am saying is the investment. Mm-hmm. We are trying to make it into a sector which will enable mm-hmm. us to launch on many other programs. Like for example, a prime minister's mm-hmm. very ambitious and the most desirable program for the country, which is going to create jobs, mm-hmm. which is going to create value addition. If you are manufacturing in India, just imagine the benefit. Just let me one example. You All in the context of railways, you say. In the context of railways, yeah. I'll just give an example. How what what I mean in the context of the railways. ancillary industries, etc. Absolutely. But I'll just give one example. All the years, we have exported iron ore from India and made other countries become giant in steel production. Yeah. And then we are very good because we supported their industrialization. Then we are also good or rather better to them by importing the same finished goods from them. Yeah. How does it make sense? Why I am saying this in the context of railways? Because railways moved those iron ore and when the finished goods were also imported, we moved them back. Suppose railways now play a role mm-hmm. of making sure that we do not export it but we actually create an internal transportation system available so that steel can go to different places, the iron ore can go to different places so we can manufacture steel in India. Now just for example, India is now, Tata Steel was the largest. Yeah. Now some other company, JSW is for example, is producing more than double of what Tata Steel is producing. Sure. It has happened in no time. So that will make, make in India possible. If you make steel, we are still So you are saying that you did not export so much iron ore to China That's right. and import finished steel from Japan. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is how we made it. And in a process, we actually damage our environment. And then what was the value addition? When you export just a iron ore, just taking it out from the earth. So we are actually exporting mother earth. Yeah. So what, what, what did we get out of that? So now the railways and the prime minister vision is, how do you make steel in India? Yeah. But just imagine the vision. It's not just make, waiting at steel, going beyond it and make heavy industry from that steel to be made in India. Can you not make power equipment in India? Can you not build all the different type of heavy machinery sure. that may be required for construction, that may be required for mining, that may be required for so many other purposes? Can we not make in India? Over a period of time, can we not make aircrafts in India? Yeah. And why should we import? Like Brazil yeah. is now make embryos that own aircrafts. Why we could not, why cannot we do it? They have created an ecosystem for aircraft. Ecosystem you create. So the whole, but to make that ecosystem work, mm-hmm. as the Prime Minister vision to be real, we have a role to play. Yeah. We must actually create the logistic support yeah. for movement of raw material to the factories. Sure. Take the finished goods from factories, export it if that is to be exported or send it to the other parts of the India mm-hmm. where the market is. Do you think we need a Ministry of Logistics? Either I mean, way, I'm just, uh, it's just a no, thought, you know? it, it Actually speaking, it is needed, but at least to some extent, so Prime Minister... Railways does it to some extent, right? Logistics. Yeah. Mm. So we are actually planning one organization, I mean, subject to other approvals. Mm. It's a logistic corporation of India. Okay. Where you want to bring in all the different ends. See, basically, we must have at one single location, mm-hmm. all the different logistical aspects into one place. Yeah. We are working on that. Okay. Because uh, uh, logistics is one area, as you said, which India, which makes India uncompetitive today because the, the, the time it takes for goods to come to the port, then to the facility and then add value and send it back to the port. The turnaround time in India is one of the poorest compared to a South Korea or a Taiwan or Singapore, right? So isn't that a key problem with making India, which needs to be addressed? No, you are absolutely right. And that's why we need a proper logistic support in which not only the time but the cost of transportation also and railway has a key role important role absolutely and so this is one aspect that either you not only turn around time but also cost of transportation secondly we cannot create industrialization and transportation system and logistical organization Mm -hmm. which create other issues for example environmental challenges if you are using road then the greenhouse gas emission from the road transportation will be much much higher than the railways so, you so must there needs to be a shift back to railway uh, transport. Railways have to reclaim its share of transport yeah. on the cargo side, right, as opposed to roads. To do that, how do you get it back? We are almost at the time of independence. Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor will address that to some extent. Yeah, but also, if you have to make investment, if you are making three to four times more investment to roads uh-huh. than in the railways, yeah. this is obvious. Obvious will happen. The road, road will grow at the expense of railways. Yeah. So now we have to grow in a way that we don't have to do it at the expense of rail. The roads, roads can also work, but we have to can complement them. So roads, we can create run, trunk routes. We are now creating port connectivity. Yeah, yeah. So from port, we bring it to the general yeah. line. From there, to take it to the hinterland, maybe roads can do that job. Yeah. But major lines, trunk routes, backbone 
infrastructure, logistic has, can, could be supported by the railways. Sure, Mr. Prabhu, here is where uh, uh, money comes in, and uh, you you are a chartered accountant by background, and you you know financial engineering better than most ministers. Now, you have been going around seeking uh, long-term financing for this huge scale-up that you are looking at in the Indian Railways, 8.5 lakh crore in, in five years. Uh, now, and you say that you've actually worked the details backward. Now, where is the financing coming from? Uh, and I'd like you to tell us uh, whether government-to-government -government deals are happening. Like Japan today has said that, that it's going to spend $110 billion. It's competing with China. Uh, a statement has come that they'll spend in Asian infrastructure. China is talking about spending big uh, f uh, amounts in infrastructure in India. So do you think that India is in a sweet spot? We just need to aggregate the Japanese and Chinese money and whatever, the uh, dollars coming from the US and other countries and just put it together? Is, is it that simple or is it uh, more complicated than that? No, no, you're absolutely right. No, let me first tell you that we are already tied up. In a sense, not tied up, in a sense that money has not come, but we know exactly from the money will come. For example, in the next five years, mm. what we'll need, we'll get it from the LIC, we'll also get it from the World Bank, Asian Development Bank and the IFC. We'll also get it from uh, the tax-free bonds with the finance minister has allowed us to in okay. increase. We'll also get more from the India Infrastructure Development Fund with the government is setting for 2 lakh crores. Okay. So we'll be able to draw from that. Oh. And again, the finance minister has been very kind. He has already increased our GBS, so if he increases little more, mm -hmm. we can get about 2,50,000 crores from that itself. Mm -hmm. Additionally, mm -hmm. we are getting about what we are proposing that 8.5 lakh crores, about 1.5, mm -hmm. which is for station development and yeah. things like this. Which is, if it happens, this money happens. If it doesn't happen, I don't have to raise money for it. Yeah, yeah. That's only a cost of project, that's why we have taken it. Yeah. Plus, we have already signed an agreement with Coal India mm -hmm. for Odisha for Jharkhand and we'll do it for Chhattisgarh. Okay. We already do, done the same thing with the steel ministry. Mm -hmm. So that money I am getting from them yeah. and using it for okay. development of railway line and without putting our money, the railway lines will start earning money for railways. Okay. So it is a win-win for both. They get evacuation, we get uh, our uh, this was, and they have, they have the money so they can put it there. Okay. So money is arranged like this. Now to answer your other week, very interesting question. See, there is a huge global liquidity. Uh -huh. We talked about global imbalances in terms of some countries acquiring large number of yeah. uh, reserves uh -huh. and that creating some sort of global imbalance because if all the money is getting sucked yeah. into a particular country at the expense of the rest of the world, then the currency and the global markets will get affected a bit. That was talk when the US was very concerned about yeah. uh, losing yeah. their competitive edge. And the US became the largest importer, and that's why they're running a huge current account deficit and also trade deficit. Now that situation has changed a bit because US is also rebalancing a bit. Yeah. But India has a great opportunity. If you accumulate reserves and also you have huge domestic savings, mm -hmm. in case of China 50%, in case of Japan also very high. Plus, Japan has pension funds, yeah. huge pension funds. Australia has two trillion dollars of pension funds, more than the GDP. Scandinavians or the Nordic countries have the GDP, uh, the pension, pension funds. Fund, yeah. Canada has a pension fund, US has pension funds as well as private equity funds. long term fund, 30 years, 40 years. 30 years. Mm -hmm. Now, the key is what you have identified correctly is that we need funds for a long period, mm -hmm. long gestation, long duration period, the maturity period should be long for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If you get money for infrastructure to be repaid in two years and three years, mm -hmm. It is a ridiculous idea. It is not a cash credit that you are taking for doing a working capital, where you can have borrow like that. So you need to ensure, therefore, the long just long duration, long maturity tenure bonds or paper. And where are you getting this from? Are you getting uh, firm this thing from Japan or China? No, we are not included in this 8.5 these two sources at all. But I'm just talking about so the you just included our internal uh, because, yeah. domestic sources. Domestic. And then again, we'll have our own uh, internal resources also to about a lack. So we have that available now. But I'm talking about the possibility. Oh. A huge possibility for a country like India is to benefit from this two way. One is the liquidity. Other is some of the countries like China uh -huh. have created over capacity. Okay. So today they are dumping steel in India yeah. because their capacity is very huge. Just imagine why they created steel capacity? Because they wanted to create heavy industry. Yeah. They've got four BHL in China, at least, maybe more. Like the BHL, they've got four. So Japan, Japan now, uh, China, has created that capacity for manufacturing this heavy industry. Yeah. That 
industry also capacity has increased. Now they cannot put a more power plant like what they did in the past. So where do they export it? Now we have a great opportunity. Then again, they are so created. You are saying that India should uh, use that capacity, is it? Capacity one. I tell them we can manufacture in India. India, yeah. That's the prime minister dream. Suppose we are going to import aircraft. Because importing from China may not be the solution, right? Straight import. Because we have already a trade imbalance. Yeah. See, yeah, our yeah, target yeah. was to have 100 billion dollars of trade with Japan, uh, with China, which was actually more than 60, 65 billion already, oh. in which we had an adverse trade trade balance against India. Suppose we start manufacturing in Suppose India. Suppose the Chinese and Indian joint venture happens here in India. That, that that's the solution. Is that's a one solution. Second is so they can come with capacity to manufacture as well as money because they have the money. So this is a win. win Let's situation. talk of this Delhi Chennai uh, railway. We are talking to them for Delhi Chennai corridor. speed railway. Where the Chinese want to do? Uh, they are interested to do it. So we'll. But tell me, Mr. Prabhu, I I personally find this idea very attractive. But do you think our whole system uh, has shed the suspicion uh, historically? that it has had against China. Do you think the Home Ministry will not, when the Chinese come with ideas which you find attractive, you could just get those ideas cleared at the level of Home Ministry, IB, etc.? No, but in the past it's been a problem. But they have to be vetted undoubtedly. But at but the they same have to time, more practical it's a commercial transaction. Yeah. It is something which is going to benefit India. So. What, whatever the safety concern, security concern, they will be vetted in any case by the ministry's concern. But commercially, it makes a lot of sense to create infrastructure in India which we need $1 trillion for the next five years. We need not only money… Through local joint ventures. Through right, local joint ventures to create employment in India, huge employment in India. Yeah. Okay. So, it's a great win-win. And tell me, you, when you… Uh, do you think railway as an organization itself is prepared at the management level, at the level of workers, to really scale up on such a big scale. From from what you're telling me and from the numbers that I see, 8.5 lakh crore or 5 years, you will need a substantial scale up. Uh, you may have to do things on a war footing like we saw the Delhi Metro project uh, run by Sridharan. So maybe you need some uh, half a dozen Sridharans to implement many of these projects, right? Am I right in my understanding? Yeah, yeah. you know, that's why what we have done is, uh, you're absolutely right. We have delegated most of these commercial powers. I mean, at least I have delegated 100%, but then board also delegated most, more or less, and we are delegating more to the general manager. Okay. So then what happens is the action is in there. So our implementation… So are they mentally sort of prepared to… It takes time. See, you can't blame them because suddenly you come and… So you'd give them about two, three years to sort of… No, no, not, I don't think two, three years. They are already getting geared up for this. We are constantly doing a program with them, talking to them. Tomorrow, uh, on the 26th onwards, we have got two weeks program. So, your reorientation is already on? Uh, with, with, by talking to them, understanding them and you know, in any case, see their capability was never in doubt. Never in doubt, yeah. But only problem was that there are uncertainty. If you are going to take a larger project and next year you don't know where the money is going to come from, mm -hmm. what is the interest that a project manager will have in implementation? Sure, yeah. So, we are definitely doing that. We are also fixing responsibility, saying that this is your job, you must implement it. Now, we have to do something more to make sure that the project team remains in place for a fairly good amount of time till the project is completed during the life cycle of the project. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, life cycle of the completion of the project. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we also must have some incentive system. Yeah. See, in India, project is delayed Nobody is responsible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But if you complete in time, okay, I can understand. So you're no building that incentive. But if you do it beforehand, why you should not incentivize a person? Mm -hmm. If it is cost overrun, which is going to increase the cost of the project by three, four times, yeah. still nobody is responsible. But if you can complete in 20% less, why should not be incentivized? Absolutely. So I think we should need to put that in place also. So you are doing that. And are you getting some lateral expertise also from outside? Uh, that is not that easy because in an organization like railways, uh, because we have more or less the internal promotion. But I think people are really good. Our asset is people. We have to leverage them by giving them training maybe, but also getting them exposed to what is happening all over. And they, with their commitment is absolutely fabulous. So I think we'll be able to use that as a strength and try to leverage on it and try to build tomorrow's railway. Okay. Now, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, reorienting the management uh, of the railways, uh, you know, there's a problem which the railways have historically had. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's problem with the, this government. Its procurement system uh, has been found to be very primitive. And there was a, the previous government was trying to bring a law uh, I think it was called public procurement law, which didn't happen. It was a very critical law, which uh, was looking at making procurement more transparent 
and uh, therefore more effective. So, do you think railways today, its tendering system, uh, etc., uh, is it? Do you think it, it's free of uh, all the old maladies embedded in the procurement system? No, no, you are absolutely including right. corruption. Of course. No, no, that's why first thing I did was as a, when I became the minister, mm -hmm. I had to come to Railbond to take charge. Mm -hmm. But even before I came to Railbond, the then chairman railway board had come to receive me at a guest house where I was staying. I told him my first decision mm -hmm. as a railway minister is to delegate all my tendering powers. Yeah, I noticed that. You so that, that has already been done. Mm -hmm. Now we have to codify it. So wherefore the codification is also already on. We are already moving towards our e-tendering system, which are done, but I want to expand it quite a bit. In that, we are already trying to make sure that you know e-tendering should not remain an independent of the overall mainframe of what we really need to do as an IT superstructure. Mm -hmm. So we are already cre creating a roadmap for that. This will be a small portion of that so that everything will get integrated finally. Okay. Even operations should be monitored online. We should be able to, over a period of time, if there are CCTV cameras and now there's a technology coming which is so cheap, mm -hmm. you can even watch what is happening on a particular station sitting here. Okay. So why should not we do that? Absolutely. Therefore, I think we are planning to do something like this, but you are absolutely right. There's a room for improvement always and we are trying to do that. Also, one more thing, when railway, uh, bo when they borrow heavily from say abroad, foreign loans, of course in the initial period you said it will be domestically uh, raised uh, money. Uh, railways will also, I presume, will have to have a good balance sheet. You will have to keep showing surpluses uh, for the foreign lender, pension funds, etc. to be convinced that, uh, that it's, it's a good balance sheet. Although inherently railway is a good balance sheet because it has captive customers. It's a monopoly. There is, <laughs> there is no other <laughs> organization providing the service. So, so, so are you looking at uh, sort of those aspects also? Yes, yes. We have already put in place, uh, I mean, I have announced in my budget speech, we are acting on it, is to change a reform or accounting system. Okay. Not just make it from single entry to double entry. Not just moving it from cash to accrual, but go something beyond that. So we are already working on that. Still the project was already there, but I want to completely revamp it and make it from budgeting till the expenditure is incurred okay. and tracking it beyond it to make sure that the indebted outcome are captured at the time of budgeting itself and so that we can actually evaluate that process at a time after the expert is incurred whether real So you are actually looking at overhauling the That's entire it. accounting system. So finally, I want to uh, go into a macro question. Your government strategy from the budget, Mr. Jaitley's budget also, it's very clear that your uh, private investment is not uh, forthcoming yet. Uh, for various reasons, global uh, recession or whatever, global headwinds. Now, your strategy is hinging on really scaling up public sector investments and railway is actually taking the lead and there are other public sector companies. Power, for instance, Mr. Piyush Goel has issued tenders that NTPC will pick up companies, power companies which are not able to, com com private uh, power projects which are not able to complete for various reasons. Uh, similarly, ONGC. So, do you think that the first two, three years will be really the the public sector uh, which will play a big role in uh, lifting investments and therefore uh, producing uh, higher gdp growth no no not two three years necessarily mm -hmm. but definitely to begin with we have to step up public spending mm -hmm. and on capital see this is a very good idea that if you yeah, that's what i mean capital yeah. no, it's no, a capital expenditure so public right? expenditure on capital account is a very good idea this is a capital expenditure which will result into creation of assets and eventually will bring in and then the private investment come in the why it is necessary also because mm -hmm. we had large number of private sector projects particularly infrastructure were stuck in the previous government's time yeah. so unless that is untangled and the money comes out of from that mm -hmm. the people may not have resources to put it the banks also have taken sectoral exposure yeah, yeah. if you can exp give a lending to a power sector mm -hmm. say 30 percent of your balance sheet yeah. they cannot go beyond that because you exceeded the prudential norm sure, yeah, so yeah. therefore uh, we have to do that public spending to begin with mm -hmm. railways have one lakh crore plan for this year which is double than previous year or not even double more than double mm -hmm. from the previous year which is substantially higher yeah. i think if all goes well the next year plan may be even bigger than this plan okay yeah. and the third plan may be even bigger than the okay. second plan so in the five years cycle if we spend this the next five years would be probably even much higher than what we have planned for these five years okay if you complete those two cycles of five years each mm -hmm. in which you make investment like this on a continuous basis on an incremental basis mm -hmm. 10 years later you will see a substantial change in railway's atmosphere and the ability to retain uh, excess money that we can make 
from this will be higher. So we can plow back that money into the railways. The railways will be able to invest more. And then the vicious cycle of underinvestment leading to no investment, no investment leading to yeah. uh, lack of revenue will be completely become a virtuous cycle. That's what we are planning to do. Thank you very much, Mr. Suresh Prabhu, and hoping that you uh, railways take the lead actually in, uh, in lifting uh, GDP growth uh, uh, over the next two, three years. Uh, that's all we have uh, uh, for now. Thanks for watching.